All right. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all. It's always a blessing to worship together uh, in this place. And um, wow, it's the second semester of the year. Uh, half a year half has passed, and it's uh, by the, the grace of God that we are able to, you know, uh, go through the season, and we are always rejoicing in all of the things that God is doing in our lives. And I do pray that every time we go to worship, uh, we enjoy Him together, that we gather with the people of God in this place to uh, share His goodness and interact with one another and to enjoy God's Word. And, and as we praise Him and worship Him, we celebrate His goodness. Um, and so with, with that, I would like to invite every, everyone in this place, come. Let's let's start worship. Come, let's let's us all stand. And let's begin our worship this morning. Praise the Lord. Church, let's begin our worship service by acknowledging that we can boldly approach the Father's throne of grace, knowing that the way there has been opened through the perfect sacrifice, the perfect redemption of God the Son in Jesus Christ. And that this gospel truth, this gospel joy has been poured into our hearts by God the Holy Spirit. So as you come to worship this morning, may the favor, the blessing, and the joy of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. You may be seated, church. Listen to the word of God. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Now, church, let us take a moment of silence and let us prepare our hearts to worship him. Let's raise our voice to praise the Lamb of God. My friend 
of silence as we pray to God and confess our sins to Him. Let us pray. sinful human being, Lord. And we have confessed all of our sins, Lord, that we have committed, and we are so grateful that you still give us your grace, you still give us your pardon, Lord, and you have made us worthy to worship you this morning. Be with us all, Lord, today, and we pray so that your presence can be filled, can can be filled in our hearts, and we can really celebrate you uh, in this Sunday service. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Now, church, uh, I invite us all to rise, to stand, together with the churches who believe to the Apostles' Creed, let us declare our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, if you haven't uh, said hi to your neighbors, this is the great time to do it. It's so good to see everyone smiling at each other. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Let us sing this. Let us sing this song. Oh 
hope that makes us pumped. <laughs> but I know uh, it's now time for us to listen to the Word of God. We're going to focus our mind. We're going to focus our heart to receive the Word of God. Let us prepare our heart by singing this song. Amen, amen. Can I pray for the kids as before they go to Sunday school? Come, come. Ayo, doa dulu ya. All right. Okay. This is Spider-Man. What happened to T-Rex? Usually you have T-Rex. 
<laughs> Oke, okay, ayo Chris, kita doa ya. Lord Jesus, thank you for these kids. Please bless them as they go to Sunday school today so that they will be able to learn about your love and your power. Uh, bless the teachers, help them, Lord, by your compassion and give them your, your wisdom. Thank you. Bless the Sunday school today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, off you go. Bye-bye. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ketinggalan satu tuh. Okay. Thank you, guys. All right. It's good to see you all this morning, and um, uh, it's a brand new month, and I'm excited to share a couple of things uh, with you guys this morning. Um, let me start with this, though. Um, anybody has a, has a certain allergy? Ada yang punya alergi enggak? Yeah? Some of you are nodding your heads, and it's okay, you don't have to tell me your kryptonite, <laughs> because I know... Allergy means, you know, uh, you have something that can hurt you, right? Maybe usually is a something to do with food, right? And I remember when I was hospitalized a few years ago because of dengue fever, uh, the hospital asked me, right, so it, do you have any allergy, right? Because they want to make sure they don't give me any type of food that I might be allergic to and then end up not Making it out, right? And so I said, yeah, I do have an allergy. What is your allergy? I'm allergic to lobster. So uh, I know I have a fancy allergy. So it's like, okay, no worries. We, don't, we will not serve you lobster. We don't have that kind of budget for you. you know? So I'm all good on that department. Somehow, I'm allergic to something so extravagant, right? I think I'm a bit allergic to fresh seafood except sushi. So I'm okay with sushi, but somehow... I did one time eat lobster and just makes me kind of, you know, itchy and red and not feeling good uh, for a while. What does allergy have to do with X18? Here we go. Okay. Some of the topics in Christianity can make us have an allergic reaction. Like, whoa, no, you know. Usually, some of the topic that we don't like to talk about in church, number one is money. Right? <laughs> Every time the pastors talk about money, everyone suddenly have an allergic reaction. You know, okay, I want to go away. <laughs> right? First is money. And secondly, usually, when we talk about mission, when we talk about evangelism, when we talk about witnessing, right? That words can, can, can sometimes struck fear to some Christians. It can make us allergic in a sense that I don't want to hear about this. Please don't guilt me into doing this. This is not for me. Especially nowadays in our modern uh, understanding that we have to be tolerant, we have to be open, we have to be uh, embracing all types of views and opinions and religions. How can you talk about sharing the gospel, right? Somehow, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ has been demoted into what? Into uh, 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 sh- saying bad things about other religions. Sharing the good news of Jesus Christ has been demoted into to something arrogant, something unloving, something intolerant. It has to do with scaring people into hell, right? Memberitakan Injil, reputasinya udah turun gitu, di demosi. But I want to help you out because... August is our church mission month. So the whole Sunday, we will talk about this. <laughs> Because it's good. I want to convince you this morning, and I pray by the, uh, by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that evangelism or mission is not a dirty word. It's not a dirty word. After all, you are announcing the good news. Sharing the gospel means you are helping people connect with God. Or uh, put it more simply, it's helping people even connect with reality itself. So I, I, I pray that today I'll be able to help you out a bit to change the negative stereotype sometimes that people have with mission. That it's not a dirty word, but it's a privilege. Let's open our Bible to Acts 1. Uh, verse 8, and then I'll read to you the text, and then we'll pray, okay? Acts 1, verse 8. This is the word of the Lord. 
Jesus said to the disciples, Acts 1, verse 8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Let's, let's pray one more time. Lord, we are facing you right now through the Word of God. Help us to focus and help us to enjoy it. Help us to, uh, to open our heart and our lives so that you will tell us what you want, Lord. And Father, enable me. I'm a weak and sinful preacher so that I'll be able to explain your word and announce the gospel this morning. Bless our time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Acts. The book of Acts. Kisah para Rasul. Acts is simple. Acts is a story of God's grace flooding out of the world. Cerita tentang keban- kasih karunia yang banjir di mana-mana. Gitu ya? Like we don't like the idea of a flood, right? But Acts is about the grace of God. The gospel message is like a flood. Everywhere it's, it's going. You know, it's going everywhere. From the cross and the resurrection of Jesus is in Jerusalem. The flood continues to reach the end of the earth. And here, in the beginning of the text, we see Jesus equipping and calling His disciples to continue to spread the word, to join His mission. Now, I want to begin with a quick observation of this text, I think quite familiar to some of you, right? One of those famous texts, you will be my witnesses. Notice, Notice that in this statement, in this verse, Jesus is giving a promise. Jesus is not giving an instruction. Yeah, nggak sih? Like if you, if you just read the sentence overall, Jesus is not saying, you must be my witnesses. You must receive power, right? Even the Greek grammar, it's not imperative. Imperative means commandment, imperative. Men menyuruh gitu. Ini tidak menyuruh, ini menyatakan. Jesus is not giving instruction, Jesus is giving a statement. You will receive power, you will be my witnesses. Jesus is basically declaring, hey believers, Christians, the Holy Spirit will work in you in such a way that the gospel will be heard worldwide. So in the beginning guys, Acts 1.8 is not asking us what we should do. Acts is telling us what God has done. So I think, I think in, in the whole framework of our, my sermon today, I want to begin with that. I want, I want, I want us to, to look at what God has done first to us so that we can go out there to spread His heart and His news. Okay? So the gospel, uh, Jesus is saying, you will receive power, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all the ends of the earth. And that's what happened in, the, in Acts. In the first, uh, the few first, uh, the, I think the first, first, uh, the first seven chapters, the, the gospel is preached in Jerusalem in, the, in, their, in, in their area. And then uh, I think the, uh, another, uh, a few chapters, it will spread across culture, across religion to Judea and Samaria. And then finally, by the end, I think the few chapters of Acts, the, the Paul and Barnabas and his, his uh, friends have uh, uh, spread the gospel to the Roman Empire where, where Paul was waiting execution by the Roman emperor, because at that time, Rome, Rome is considered the ends of the earth. Like, like that's, that's where, from Rome, you can go anywhere, basically, right? But here, I, I want to I wanna start by uh, giving us the opportunity to celebrate <laughs> that this statement, I think, has somehow has been completed, or at least, you know, uh, we have seen the, uh, the, the, the completion, or at least on the way to completion, the gospel spread worldwide, right? I mean, today we, we, we know that, that Christianity as a religion is still the majority of religion in the world. Orang, yang, orang agama paling besar di dunia masih agama Kristen, betul? The biggest religion in the world is still Christianity, although I know we can 
a debate. You okay? You got Catholics, you got Orthodox, you got real Christians, but born again, but not. But the point is, Christianity has impacted the world. That's my point. It has truly spread. It has truly shaped everything from education, science, human rights, family to individual lives. The gospel has truly reached the end of the world, and we are uh, we are enjoying the legacy of the Christian faith. Why is this important? I, I, because because I, I want you to, to know that we are living, we, the grace of God is here. There's one kid, his name is Tom. Okay? A real story, by the way. So Tom, he was the kind of child who loved to play with dinosaurs, right? Like, like Theo. <laughs> like, and when, when, when if you ask Tom, Tom, why do, you like, why do you like dinosaurs? Because I like them because they were big, they were fierce, they have humongous teeth, Obviously, you know which dinosaurs I'm talking about, right? The majestic T-Rex, right? I like them because they are so powerful. So Tom likes powerful, titi, you know, powerful, glamorous, fierce animal. And from that, he always enjoyed, you know, things related to power. And so when, when his mom and dad took him to church, his dad is an atheist, his mom is an Anglican. Uh, he went to, Tom went to church with his mom, and as he learned Bible stories, it's interesting. He found himself more captivated with the great imperial power of the Bible. He likes, whoa, the Pharaoh, <laughs> whoa, the Persian, whoa, the Romans, whoa, the Greeks. He was fascinated with the kings and the emperors. He didn't really like Jesus because Jesus and his band of followers, only 12 of them. You see what I'm saying? Okay, aduh, kok cupu banget gitu, like very different, right? Wow, Roman, this is cool, this is big, this is awesome. The totalitarian regime, right? Caesar, yeah, you know. So it's funny, this kid, he likes Rome and Greek more than Jesus and the 12 disciples. <laughs> Simply because like he liked T-Rex, right? Big, fierce, powerful. That interest eventually stayed with him and made him go to Oxford to study history, you know, get his PhD, and then he delved into the classical world of Greek and the Romans. But even though he, 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 he reached to a conclusion that, wow, uh, even though he was fascinated with the Greek and Roman culture, he said, I did not want to live there because that the, the culture is so scary, you know. It's, it's, it's one thing to admire a great white shark. Wow, this is so cool, right? But do you want to swim with a great white shark? <laughs> no, right? It's, it's sometimes we like to uh, analyze how powerful is the lightning, right? Wah, keren ya, ada halilintar, ada, ada apa tuh? Kilat, yeah? But how many of you want to be near lightning and thunder? Of course not, right? It, so it's the same with Tom. He looks at the the great powers of, of the classical world, the Greeks and the Romans, and wow, they're so awesome militarily, politically, all of that. But I'm glad I did not live in that era. Why? Because the Greek and the Romans are known, it's a scary world of violence, torture, slavery, killings, no regards for women, no regards for the poor, exploitation of the sick, basically all sorts of, you know, Crimes that today we will call them crimes against humanity. But back then, it was ordinary life. You know what I'm saying? Kayak mereka gak rasa itu salah. Gitu. An -an Anak lahir perempuan dibuang. Itu gak salah. There's, there's no guilt. You know? Man is not just the head of the family. He's the owner of women. You know? Things like that. And so, Tom began to question, how is it that the world now especially the modern Western world, which is the, the descendant of the Greek and Romans, right? How come the world that we live now was so radically different from the ancient Rome and Greece? He asked a question. I mean, how did we get, we get the values of what? Human rights, civil rights, equality, caring for the poor, Protecting the vulnerable. That's not the value in the ancient world. Kok bisa tiba-tiba dunia kita jadi lebih baik? Padahal uh, 
atas kita, apa tuh? Our descendants, right? They are so cruel. Apa kok atasan? Apa yang? Ancestor, yeah. Our ancestors are so different. And so Tom worked it out. He wanted to answer this question, how did the draconian power of the Greco-Roman world become the liberating power of the modern Western world at least? And he, he, he wrote a book and then he, he walked through more than 2,500 years of Western history and then his answer was unexpected. Tom was an atheistic historian. I'm sorry, an atheist historian, right? And his answer, he, he, he found that the reason why the, the modern world, the Western world changed so much from that violent culture into a culture that prizes upon compassion, humanity, equality, protection of the poor. He concluded the reason the world changed is because the man on the cross. He concluded that Jesus Christ revolutionized the ancient world. The values that we have today about, about dignity, about human rights, about racial equality, about fairness, about respect for women, about sanctity of individual life, he argued it can be traced down to historical Christian faith. That's why he said that all of us in the West are goldfish and the water we, sh- and the water we swim is Christianity. Dia mengibaratkan kita, minimal di barat ya, orang-orang di barat itu seperti ikan koi gitu ya. Dan ikan mas, sorry, ikan mas. Dan kolam yang kita, kita itu tinggal di kolam bernama kekristenan. Everything is shot through the values of Christian faith. And, and Tom, he had not become a believer in Christ per se, but he had become a believer in the necessity of Christ. Gitu, anggap ya. Dia tidak jadi orang Kristen langsung. Dia tidak percaya Yesus langsung. Tapi dia percaya Yesus itu perlu buat dunia. He did not trust Christ immediately. He became a believer in the necessity of Christianity. Because the gospel really has changed the world. See, I guess I, wanna, I, wanna, I, wanna, I want to put you guys at the beginning. is simply to conclude this. The gospel is the fount of all goodness that the world needs. And the world has benefited from the values of Christian faith. See? When we share the gospel, we are not sharing something demeaning or, or, or dangerous or, or hurtful or harmful or, or manipulative. No. The gospel is not just a goodness. It's a fount of goodness. Injil bukan cuma sekedar sebuah kebaikan, tetapi sumber kebaikan. And, and, and this is just one historian looking at the world from a purely historical point of view. Okay, It has nothing to do with faith, has nothing to do with theology, has nothing to do with Bible, simply observing the world and came to his conclusion. I, I pray that this at least have kind of shifted our fear, yeah? That when we have the gospel, we, it's not, we are not like salesmen selling a bottle of water into to clueless tourists in the desert, okay? <laughs> we are more like fellow travelers telling other thirsty travelers, there is a well. There is an oasis. The water is pure, The water is refreshing, and most importantly, the water is free. <laughs> Kita nggak seperti orang salesman ya, yang jualan botol minum untuk orang turis-turis yang cupu-cupu itu. Tapi kita seperti sama-sama, turis yang sama. Tapi kita menunjukkan sama-sama turis itu loh, ada, ada kolam, ya, ada sumber mata air. We're just showing them something good, something true, something beautiful. Now with that out of the way, let's dig a bit deeper into the text. So God has given us the gospel. It's good, it's true, it's beautiful. So what is our part? Jesus says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. What is this? What does it mean to receive power from the Holy Spirit? Let me give you a by way of analogy. 
the power of gasoline will make a car run. The power of YouTube will make your child sit quietly. Yeah. <laughs> right, right? Uh, the power of marketing will make all the ibu-ibu shop late at night. <laughs> right? Now, what kind of power does the Spirit have on us? See, in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God represents His powerful presence in the world. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of creation, the source of life. The Spirit of the Holy Spirit is the source of speech and revelation behind God's prophets. The Spirit of God is the source of authority and power behind God's leaders, judges, kings, all the great men, David and Solomon and, and Elijah and, 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 and Ezekiel. In the New Testament, continues, Jesus is conceived in the Holy Spirit. He began His ministry being anointed by the Holy Spirit. And so, the magnificent Spirit who lives in priests and kings and judges and prophets and Jesus Himself is now given to the disciples. It's now given to us today. The Holy Spirit is no longer contained to the spiritual elite. The Holy Spirit is given to us, to all who believe. Let's, let's break it down in the book of Acts. What kind of, how, how does the power play out? Simply from looking at Acts, there's a couple of things that uh, the Spirit empowers the people to do. First of all, it has to do with miracle. Yeah. The word power and the word miracle in Greek is a bit synonymous. Uh, dunamis, like dynamite. Okay? So, um, miracles is often used to confirm the gospel. So, you have, of course, Jesus, right? Preaching, and then afterwards, there's healing. Peter, the same. John, the same. Paul, the same. Miracles often follow the preaching of the gospel. Not always. But this is especially important for the Jews. I think with the Greeks, they like logic more. Okay? That's why... Uh, there's that famous statement in Corinthians, right? The Jews ask for science, the Greeks ask for kind of wisdom, right? With the Greeks, you find arguments and debates. But with the Jews, I think it's similar to us Indonesians, Asian people. We like something supernatural happening, right? I remember watching a, um, a, a clip of, uh, of mission, and you, you have these people ministering to... Uh, I know, somewhere in the small village. Okay, they're just helping people, praying, 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 uh, praying for them, you know, just interacting with them. And there's one old lady, she was sick. She, she was unable to physically, she, she wants someone to pray for her, okay? And she was sitting, she, 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 wants, to, she wants to be healed. Basically, she was lumpuh, what is that? Uh, crippled, yeah? Sorry? Er Paralyzed, thank you, thank you. Somehow it's become an English language as well. Okay, it's an English lesson. Okay, thanks. Uh, paralyzed. And she, she wants, can you pray for me? But everybody was busy, okay? And there's this cameraman, you know, because he was, he, was, he, was, he was the person who was supposed to kind of record everything. He's like on the sideline, all right, okay, a mission, 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 right? Evangelism, evangelism, witnessing, witnessing, helping people, helping people, right? He was the cameraman. Everybody was busy. And this old lady, please, can you pray for me? And then one of the pastors or one of the people there, hey, hey, can you pray for her? And then the cameraman says, me? No, 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 I'm just a cameraman. You know, I cannot pray. I don't know what to say. Please, help, you know, just, just pray. What should I say? Whatever, you know, just pray in the name of Jesus, you know. Pray for her. What, what does she want? Just pray. No, no, I cannot. I need to record. Just, just you know, just one minute, two minutes. And then, okay, okay, I'll try, he said. So he dropped his camera, you know, one of those big cameras, right? And just uh, pray for this lady. I cannot hear, but I think he just prayed something very simple, one, things that we used to pray, right? Lord, thank you, dear, dear Lord, thank you for this lady. You know, what's her sickness? Please heal her uh, in the name of Jesus. Amen. That kind of thing, you know. After he said amen, the lady stood up. You know, the lady stood up. She was surprised. But 
the cameraman was even more surprised. <laughs> like, whoa, <laughs> what's happening? You know, she was she was surprised, but in a way that is, I'm expecting this because my God is alive. You know, that kind, of, that kind of thing. I know that you know there's a power and you know, the cameraman, the Christian cameraman, was the one who is even more surprised. Like, what just happened? <laughs> you know, he's just a cameraman. But that's one example of a miracle. Like, like there's just the stuff things that happen all the time sometimes in, in, when, you, when, you, when you try to preach the gospel. Amazing things. What else? What else? In, in the Bible, you've got, sorry, in the book of Acts, spirit em- empowerment comes in the form of boldness, kebranian. You remember Peter and John? They were captured by, you know, high priests and Pharisees, and they, uh, they were asked, they, they want to shut their mouth. But Peter and John, you know, was given boldness to continue speaking even though they are being, uh, you know, tortured and interrogated and threatened. They have boldness. I'm going to continue to speak. They have wisdom as well. Uh, Sometimes you are caught in a stitch, like for instance, in the case of Stephen, you know, he was, as some of the Jews want to debate with him, and, then, and the Bible says in Acts 6, 9 to 10, they're unable to match the wisdom of Stephen. Keren ya? Nggak bisa, nggak sanggup melawan hikmat Stephanus. And in leading, the Holy Spirit will be actively involved in kind of leading us where to go, where not to go. The famous example is Philip. Philip was brought by the Spirit to share the gospel with the Ethiopian eunuch, Acts 8, right? And after he's done with the Ethiopian eunuch, somehow the spirit carried him away. Wow, how does that look like? You know? But there's that, there's that leading, you know? You've got miracles, boldness, wisdom, leading, all of this awesome and privileged experience that we can have. But I want, I want, to, I want to say this, you know? Remember that the disciples who received this, this mandate, you will receive power. They were, not, they were not all born public speakers, right? They had their personal weakness and fears just like us, right? They were not religious professionals like the Pharisees. They were just fishermen, craftsmen, accountants, right? Orang biasa gitu loh, Bapak Ibu. Ordinary people. And yet, it was to this ordinary people like you and me that Jesus Christ entrusted the gospel message. Memang kita nggak punya modal, Bapak Ibu, untuk memberitakan Injil. Makanya kita berandalkan roh kudus. We don't have what it takes. So if you feel like, I can't do this, exactly. <laughs> That's why we rely on the Spirit to give you power. Memang kita nggak punya modal. Kita nggak punya kapital. Oh, teman-teman aku tansi <laughs> yeah. nggak punya kapital adanya liabilitas li- liability semua gitu kan yeah? but we have that because the asset was given to us by the spirit to share the gospel hope maybe we never experience all these things because we have never tried and when you do step out in faith it's amazing how Jesus gives you what you need when we learn to okay I'm going to try it just like that cameraman, you know. I'm gonna, just going to, you know. Even, even from, from a motivation that is of fear, right? And yet, God can do amazing things. Maybe we have never experienced this because we have never tried to share our gospel hope. Secondly, you will receive power and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the end of the earth. A witness, what is that? A witness is a person who testifies in legal matters, okay? A witness is more than someone with subjective or personal opinion, okay? A, a witness is not, a, is, 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 is not gossip or giving my opinion. A witness is, has, has something with objective spirit into it, objective quality into it. Witness means I see something. Right? I experience something, therefore I'm going to tell you about it. Seperti saksi di pengadilan, right? Witness in a court setting. That kind of weight, 
that God is telling us. You are my witnesses. Now, perhaps it's helpful to read Acts 1 to get out of this understanding of witness by looking at Luke chapter 24. Because Luke and Acts have the same author, and Luke chapter 24 is the last book in Luke. And so this is like a sequel, right? So Acts 1 is, Acts is a sequel of Luke. And I think in Luke 24, it kind of gives us more information to understand what witnesses really mean. In Luke 24, for instance, the resurrected Christ, he met with some of the disciples, and he told them, hey, you guys, you are my witnesses. You are witnesses of the life of Christ, the death of Christ, and the resurrection of Christ. You, you know this. So Jesus is basically saying to the disciples, you've seen me. You've lived with me. You've seen the crucifixion. You've seen the empty tomb. Now I'm here with you. Go, be, be my witnesses. In other words, to put it simply, we share the gospel because we have experienced the gospel. Sederhananya gitu tuh. Ki injil yang dibagi, harusnya injil yang lebih dulu dialami. One easy way to understand is you, you talk about what you love. Right? Di alami. Let me give you a simple uh, illustration. You talk about what you love. Everyone does this, right? First time parents constantly posting pictures of their newborns, right? Capturing everything on video, documenting every detail. I know because my friends are doing that, you know, like uh, open up the new parents, you've got pictures of the baby teething, walking, you know, going on holidays, right? You, we all do that, right? Like, and then sometimes I'm just like, at some point, we might want to say, especially those who don't have kids yet, looking at all of those, your friends posting of their kids and babies and doing all the things that they do, cute things, right? At some point, you might be tempted, especially the those who are not parents yet, you might be tempted to say, of course your kid will walk. He's a human being. <laughs> right? Of course he's going to do these things. Most every human who has ever existed, it has eventually, uh, will eventually do those things. It's what humans do. Your kid is not special. Oh no, right? Of course, we never do that. Why? Because when we become parents, that's exactly what we do. <laughs> when we become parents ourselves, that's exactly what we do. We also post our kids' pictures and, and, and video them and, and you know, make a video vlog. And even some people make a YouTube videos out of their kids' life, right? Why? We talk about kids to everyone. Why? Because it's what you do when you love someone. Simple, isn't it? It's what you do when you love something. So, it's similar. The gospel is incredible. Gospel literally means good news. Is it good news to you? Do you love God? Do you love the gospel? Has Jesus captured your heart? Why? Why not? Maybe we have taken the gospel story for granted. Maybe we have grown too familiar with Jesus. Because you talk about what you love. That's just what we do, right? And if, if your heart is, 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 is full of your kids, your family, you talk about your family. But if your heart is also, is also not, you know, not comparing this is immoral, no. But if your heart is full of Jesus, you, you will talk about Jesus. As simple as that. Because you have experienced Him. Injil yang dibagi adalah Injil yang dialami terlebih dahulu. We share what we experience. We experience God's love. And we talk about Him. Secondly, if we go back again to, to Luke 24, I think witness also means that it, the gospel has to be spread. In Luke 24, Jesus said, hey, there's my suffering, my dying and resurrection. And then he added, there is, the, you, there is, there is a need of repentance. There is a need of forgiveness. This is Luke 4, uh, the last, last of the few verses with, the, uh, uh, with Jesus encountering the disciples at the Emmaus Road. So there is an emphasis of this, the gospel must continue, the need to repent, you know. So witnesses is important, means that you have to spread the news because this is urgent, because this is a solution. The gospel is 
the solution of humanity's sin problem. Kenapa kok Yesus memerintahkan atau mengajarkan menjadi saksi-saksinya? Karena Injil adalah solusi atau jawaban bagi masalah dunia. Begitu. That's why it must be spread. You cannot keep it by yourself because people are suffering from sin. Now, that's why the modern, I understand the modern pushback. The modern pushback about mission is, is about forcing people your religion, right? Itu narasi dari dunia, ya kan? Kayak kita itu tekokin orang lain dengan agama kita. Penistaan agama, pemaksaan agama. We are, you know, forcing people. But the But one of the most important biblical logic behind mission is giving solution. Giving solution to everyone's problem. We all are suffering from sin and therefore there's the solution which is the gospel. Basically, if I can put another way, you talk about what works. <laughs> right? You talk about what works in your life. For instance, as you all know, Uh, I I I I I really uh, hate mosquitoes, right? <laughs> so I've been fighting mosquitoes all my life, and they have been fighting me too. Uh, we have an enemy and enemy relationship, <laughs> uh, and we, I I know that because you know every time we have people gathering, it might you know it, whenever we have a few people in the house, and then you've got mosquitoes. Somehow I'm their first target. You know I don't know why. It's like you know I'm like this mosquito magnet. You know. Uh, and the problem is whenever I get bit by a mosquito, um, you know, lalu apa tuh? Bendol, apa tuh? Swollen, thank you. Right, like, like, like swollen and just, whoa, it's, uh, it's just uh, itchy and painful and uncomfortable. So I'm, you know, I'm always looking for mosquito solution, you know. I've tried any, anything, I've tried many, many things, some protan with that, you know, <laughs> a bygone and things like that. We tried one of those um, light and uh, electric stuff, what is that called, you know? Right, and you attract the mosquito, and then the mosquito just, you know, uh, fried, basically, you know. Uh, but and then finally, it, it really, it's not really effective, at least in my, in our house. And the one day I'm recommended by Peter <laughs> and Stefana, and they told me they had the same problem. Said, hey, go use this thing, you know. Uh, this will help. And I don't, I don't know how to call it, but the point is that mosquito trap kind of trapped the mosquitoes and killed. The mosquito inside of it, you know. But you can see. So now I have a like this. Oh, finally, this 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 is working. This is helping to reduce my enemy in the house, you know. And so every day in the morning, that's what we look at. I mean, people when they go home, they have aquarium. <laughs> I go home. I have a mosquito reup, you know, like, well, how many victims I have today? <laughs> all all the mosquito dying inside that, you know, that thing. It's like. Yes, <laughs> but the point is, see, we, uh, that's something that works. It brings solution to my problem, and we like to talk about it, right? Hey, don't buy that. Buy this. This works. Hey, don't get a house over there. It, it's overpriced. Is it right? We talk about what works, and we talk about what doesn't work. The gospel works. We need to reflect on how the gospel works in our lives, how it has changed us. It's not just fairy tale. It's not just one amongst many. I remember there's one kid, uh, I think SMP or SMA. He was from another religion, I don't know what, and became a Christian. And her parents were so mad at the pastor. And her parents was like, you know, this is not, this is not right. You are forcing your belief. Um, You know, uh, I'm going to sue you. You know, what basically just the parents just, you know, kind of super angry at the pastor. And then, and then the pastor simply said, uh, uh, you know, Om Tanda <laughs> or Pak Bu, you know. Let's say his name is Tom, okay, because that's the name I've been using in the beginning. I just want to ask you so, um, ever since Tom believes in Jesus, how is he at school? And the parents say, well, in fact, he, he's, he's doing good at school. Better, better now. You know, he listens to his teacher more. He's, he's, you know, he's, 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 he's basically a better student now. He's, he's, 
he's, you know, he's doing his homework, he's, he's studying for his test, you know, good. And then the pastor says, oh, how about, how's, how's Tom in, in, in at home with you guys? How is he acting? Oh, in fact, at home, he's, he's also somehow, you know, better now. He's more friendly, he, he takes care of helps us take care of the house, takes care of his brothers and sisters. He's, he's a good kid. And so the pastor simply said, good. So what's the problem? <laughs> See, what's the problem? Ever since he knew, ever since Tom knew Christ, he became a better student. He became a better son and brother. What's the problem? <laughs> Sometimes it's as simple as that, right? So, we too need to reflect. How is God working in our hearts right now? How is the gospel, how has the gospel changed us, our family, our finances, our relationships? And we simply talk about what works because the gospel is true good, is true beauty. The gospel is also the hope of the world. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word this morning to help us reorient our hearts again so that we can love you by, by sharing what you have given to us. Lord, forgive us if um, we are uh, ignorant of, of, of this calling to, to, to witness, to share the good news. And we, we confess that sometimes we struggle about Jesus as the only way. We have our doubts and we have our struggles and, and we don't have what it takes. We are overwhelmed with fear and anxiety. And so today we again want to trust you, O oh Holy Spirit, to lead us and to equip us so that we remember again not what we need to do, but we remember what God has done through us, in us. You have saved us, Lord. You have redeemed us. You have given us what we need and more so that we can be your witnesses, starting in the places that are closest to us and then going farther and farther as you give us the opportunities. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, everyone, we'll continue with our uh, next part of the worship, which is the Lord's Supper. I hope you have received your uh, packet, yeah, uh, the bread and wine packet. If you haven't, please raise your hands, and then Yossi will take it to you. Ada yang belum dapat roti dan anggurnya? Kalau ada yang belum dapat, silakan angkat tangan, nanti dibantu sama teman di belakang, yeah. Now, um, let me remind you a couple of things before we eat and drink together. The Lord's Supper is a, a representation of the, a visible representation of the gospel, right? The good news of Jesus Christ, things that we just heard. Now we can see it, right? We can smell it, we can taste it. So that when we eat and drink later, it's not just empty rituals, it is an opportunity, it's a privilege to enjoy God's presence through the elements. So please, eat and drink with thanksgiving, with reverence. And secondly, I want to remind all of you that here in Reform Exodus community, the Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, is open to everyone who has received Jesus as Lord and Savior, and you have been baptized. If you fulfill those qualifications, you are welcome to join us in the Lord's Supper this morning. With that, I want to invite everyone now to, to pray, to uh, bow down and to have a, a moment with the Lord. Let's pray and prepare our hearts. Let's confess our uh, struggles, our sins again. Let's reflect on what we have heard today and prepare our hearts as we approach the Lord's table.
Lord Jesus, in front of us, the things that we hold right now is just ordinary bread, ordinary wine or juice. It's nothing special by itself. But I pray by your grace and your power, Lord, help us to see beyond that. Help us to perceive the elements, these natural elements, and take it spiritually, that the bread symbolizes your body broken for us, that the juice or the wine symbolizes your blood pour out for us, so that when we eat and drink later on, we know that you are a God who loves us, who has invited us to join you, Lord, so that we are not alone, so that we can spread your news. We confess of our brokenness and sins, and we prepare our hearts to receive this privilege, to remember your sacrifice, to celebrate the redemption, and to enjoy your, your presence this morning through the Holy Communion. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Prepare us to eat and drink together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I would like to invite everyone to stand up. Let's all rise and put the bread on your right hand like this. You can open it from the packet. Uh, please take your time. Uh, I hope it's not too difficult to open it up as you right. If you have, uh, have the bread, please put it on your right hand like this with me and then we'll eat together. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Let's eat together in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's take the cup, flip the packet, open the plastic part to take out the wine or the juice. It's okay, take your time. I hope everyone can, it's okay with it. Yeah. Great. If you have it, put it on your right hand like me. It's the same motion. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let's drink together in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, at the moment we can taste, we can perceive the sensation of bread, the sensation of wine or juice flowing in our throat, our chest, our stomach, in our body. Help us to see beyond the physical sensation, to acknowledge the spiritual reality behind it. That you have truly lived and died and rose again to save us sinners, unworthy sinners. Thank you, Lord, that you have won the day. Thank you, Lord, that you have called us to be your people. Thank you, Lord, by your blood and your body given to us, broken for us, that we can be made whole. So that now we can help others, we can help the world to be whole, to be healed. Thank you for your healing, Lord, through these elements. And now help us to be your ambassadors to heal and to, to restore the world. Despite of our weaknesses and limitations and sins and brokenness, empower us, O oh Lord, to live faithfully to your mission. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, church, you may be seated. Uh, we will continue with the rest of our worship. Right, it's time for us to give our offerings. If you want to give electronically, you may transfer to the account number displayed, or you could use the QR code that is behind you. And if you want to give uh, cash, you may put it in an envelope and put it inside the offering bag behind you as well. And while we are giving our offerings, let's listen to some announcements. Welcome to Reform Exodus community. This is our church. This is our home. Our warmest welcome to all of you, especially to those who join us for the first time. 
If you'd like to connect with us, or if you need someone to pray for you, please don't hesitate to call these numbers. Come and join our online morning prayer every Saturday at 5.30 a.m. Please register yourself through the link here to get more information. Let's get connected in our discipleship group. We have one in our each local church. Do take note of the day and time for each group. Let's support one another and grow together as the body of Christ. Shalom jemaat sekalian, saya sedang berada di dalam lokasi renovasi RGM. Kita patut bersyukur kepada Tuhan untuk beberapa hal. Yang pertama adalah karena renovasi sudah dilakukan sejak sebulan lebih yang lalu. Dan so far semuanya sesuai dengan schedule. Jadi diharapkan pada awal Oktober kita bisa launching tempat ini dengan kebaktian perdana dan acara-acara pembukaan yang lain. Yang kedua yang mau saya sampaikan adalah... Panitia pembangunan telah berusaha sebisa mungkin untuk menghemat pengeluaran yang ada dan bersyukur karena kebaikan hati para vendor, kita mengatur ini itu dan sebagainya secara detail sehingga pengeluaran bisa dihemat sampai hampir 30% dan kita patut bersyukur untuk itu. Dan yang ketiga yang mau saya sampaikan adalah saya ingin mengajak kita semua untuk terus mendoakan dan terus mendukung proyek ini bersama-sama. Bagi Bapak Ibu Sarah yang ingin mendukung secara keuangan, jangan lupa silahkan melihat kondisi keuangan kita, perkembangannya di dalam GMTTREC.TOR.ID. Bapak Ibu Sarah akan tahu berapa pengeluaran kita dan berapa pemasukan yang sudah ada. Dan yang terakhir yang saya mau sampaikan adalah berkaitan dengan kafe. Reja kita akan memiliki kafe yang bernama Kopi Rectangle. Dan saya ingin mengajak setiap jemaat yang punya karunia, talenta khusus untuk membuat makanan yang enak, terutama jajan-jajan pasar. Jangan lupa juga untuk mengusulkan makanan Bapak Ibu Saudara dan kami nanti akan menilai, mengevaluasi yang memenuhi kualitas dari Kopi Rectangle. Bapak Ibu Saudara bisa menitipkan makanan untuk dijual di kafe dan kita akan bekerja sama untuk pekerjaan Tuhan yang ini. Jadi pastikan yang mau melibatkan diri dalam kopi rectangle, silakan mengisi tautan berikut ini. Nanti akan ada tim yang menghubungi Bapak Ibu Sarah dan akan mengetes, menguji kualitas makanan Bapak Ibu Sarah. Saya sungguh berharap semoga ini menjadi pekerjaan Tuhan yang kita miliki bersama-sama. Jadi tetap semangat Tuhan memberkati. These are all for today. Happy Sunday. All right. Uh, again, I want, would like to say good morning, everyone. Uh, good to see you all. And good morning as well for those who haven't been here for a while. And I hope that afterwards we can continue our fellowship with snacks and coffee downstairs and just to enjoy one another's company in the church. Now, uh, for this morning, I don't have any... Uh, important or urgent announcement. Uh, instead, I would like for us to spend more time a bit in prayer. Uh, we know that some of our friends are sick, uh, and we know that some of our friends are also looking for uh, employment. So with that, I would like to invite everyone, let's, let's all stand as we pray for several of our friends. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that today we get to worship you. 
that today we get to gift as well for the kingdom of God. Please bless this offering so that this offering can truly help people. Please help our leaders to organize it well so that it can go to places that really in line with your will, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us the opportunity to give this morning. Father, we also want to unite our hearts and our mind to pray for the people that are sick in our church. Some of the names like Satria, uh, Chitiara, and others, I, I cannot name one by one. Father, we, we pray that you will give comfort, especially to those who are sick, that you give uh, them uh, strength, that you give uh, them your presence to endure and to hope. Lord, we pray for the doctors and the treatments that they'll be able to work in line with your power and that you'll be able to give uh, uh, rest and, 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 and healing. We also want to pray for the families who are supporting them, Lord. Give them your wisdom so that they'll know what to do and also give them uh, your presence so that they are not overwhelmed with fear and doubt, but they can make informed decisions and they can uh, support their family members who are sick. Uh, please also keep them in health, Father, because it's not easy to take care of people who are, uh, are not doing well physically. So we pray and help us as a church to support them as well, however we can, with what we have, to uh, spread our love and to show our support for, for these brothers and sisters that are struggling physically at the moment. Please, Lord, again, we pray for healing, we pray for comfort, and we pray for uh, uh, your power to work in them. Lord, we also want to pray for our brothers and sisters who are looking for an employment. God, uh, you know how scary it is when you are worried about uh, the future without having a sustainable job. So we pray, God, that you will open the ways for our brothers and sisters who are looking for one, that you give them um, uh, power, and you give them wisdom, and you give them um, Kaulutan, uh, ketekunan. You give them uh, uh, whatever necessary so that they they'll they'll trust you. At the same time, they also work hard to find what it's needed. I pray God that you will also uh, lead their their steps, lead their way, so that they'll be able to uh, find a job that is consistent, that can align with their giftings and their callings. Uh, Father, help us as a church as well to support them with what we can do, uh, so that. Uh, through employment, they can be a blessing in their workplace. Please, God, help them out. Please, God, give them what they need. Please, God, sustain them as they're looking for jobs out there. Finally, want to pray for our church, especially in this mission month. Help us to uh, reorient our hearts to look at the importance of sharing the gospel, of spreading your, your goodness, your truth, your beauty. Help us as a church to unite together, uh, to mobilize for the kingdom of God. We know that it's not an easy task. It's challenging, and it's sometimes can you know um, can be can be inconsistent. Help us, Lord. Enable us. Empower us. Inspire us. And um, so, that as a church at Rec and your church in the world, be able to continue the calling that Jesus Christ has given us has given to us to be your witnesses to the ends of the earth. Help us as a church to be a blessing to this community. The blessing to, to be a blessing to our family, our workplace, our community, our nation, and, and, and our city. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now let's lift our praise and glory back to our triune God as we close our worship this morning.
church before you leave and get sent back into the world to be the witnesses of Christ receive the benediction may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the Father and the fellowship of God the Holy Spirit be with us all from now on until forever and forevermore amen you may be seated the service is over God bless you and happy Sunday